Syngenta is a global company. We're an agricultural uh, company. We have a presence both in seeds and in chemistry uh, with the idea of providing um, optimal solutions for grower needs in any particular target market or environment. We have a global presence. Uh, we have R&D sites across the globe, over 100 R&D uh, locations and a bunch of field sites to complement those. Um, and we have efforts going on in everything from broad acre crops like corn and soy to uh, smaller crops and vegetables, lawn and garden. Um, so kind of running the gamut. So I work in a group called Molecular Analytics, which is underneath an organization called uh, Genotyping, or a group called Genotyping. Um, and our focus is to provide uh, molecular data, genetic data, uh, as well as uh, technologies to our crop customers uh, internally, and to provide basically the tools that they need to um, make the best uh, gains uh, genetically for their crops. So Thermo Fisher technologies that we're using right now are the Eureka and Axiom platforms. And um, we chose them because uh, the, the biggest things that we were looking for are, uh, were uh, platforms that could provide low to medium density uh, genotypic data uh, for fixed panels of SNPs or variants, molecular variants, uh, to support um, early genomic selection across a range of crops. Um, and the, some of the biggest factors that dictate the technologies that will apply are cost and turnaround time. Um, and uh, also the availability of an end-to-end -end service is valuable as well. But the key thing there is what can we provide uh, or deploy for our customers at a cost and a turnaround time that is scalable to the volumes they need to support their uh, genomic uh, applications. Um, and uh, so we've been working with those technologies for a few years now, um, and uh, we're pretty happy with them. So the, the challenges um, are several fold. One is traits are complex, um, especially when you're looking to um, breed for yield. Yield is not a highly heritable trait, for instance. Um, so complex traits require a lot of intense effort um, in R&D. Cost and time that it takes to develop those traits is always, there's always pressure to uh, try to develop them faster, to try to um, uh, get seeds to market in a shorter time frame, because time is money, of course. Um, and to find new ways that we can further increase the rates of gain, uh, genetic gain. Um, beyond that, the uh, costs required for technology advancement. So GM technologies are also are always, of course, uh, challenged with um, uh, the cost for uh, developing those, in addition to the cost for uh, doing all of the uh, development work and, and bringing those to market, um, and then also the um, the potential, but both the uncertainty for new technologies like genome editing. I think the key things there are, one is uh, structural variation and haplotype-based genotyping I think will become more and more prominent. You already see that a lot, but um, it's just going to further increase um, as costs come down. Um, again, cost and turnaround time really dictate where these types of platforms, where really any technology uh, gets applied. Um, and so as things become more scalable, they could become more broadly applicable. Um, access to structural variation, more of a, a, a or kind of backing up from that is just a better understanding of structural variation and how that impacts uh, traits and um, uh, the uh, how you can leverage that across a, a diverse range of germplasm um, is key as well. So genomic applications that can um, provide those sorts of data on a scalable fashion are going to be key. Overall experience with uh, Thermo Fisher across both the Eureka and Axiom platforms have been really great. Uh, what I didn't mention is a key uh, value add for us is having both platforms available at the same uh, service location. Having an end-to-end -end service, first of all, but also being able to access uh, two complementary platforms through the same organization, working with the same people, um, provides a lot of simplicity for us. 
Um, the other thing I didn't mention that uh, I think is uh, really valuable is both platforms are um, uh, were made easier for us to access because they are, they are able to take data in the format that we're used to. So. Um, Rather than requiring us to submit um, our targets and, and coordinates against a reference genome that may or may not be relevant, they can take footprints that we create, that we are interested in, uh, and utilize those, uh, which is, again, very valuable for us. It, um, it, it's, it's a little bit more of a seamless integration that way. Um, but in general speaking, uh, the people there are great. And it's very collaborative. Um, if we uh, need to troubleshoot something or if we're optimizing new panels or um, introducing new panels, uh, we feel it's a, bit, it's a very collaborative approach to that. So it's very great. Shorter turnaround times open up new applications. So um, in some applications we have turnaround time requirements in, in several weeks, but as we get to, there are other demanding applications where the turnaround time may be in a matter of one to two weeks. Um, so uh, Eureka especially has uh, quite a short turnaround time. Um, and that's enabled us to um, apply it uh, to more demanding applications. Um, and with that, we're looking to um, broaden those applications and, and, and really asking where are additional places that this could uh, um, be utilized. Um, but I would say that that platform in particular has some of the more promising um, uh, uh, turnaround time uh, delivery that we've seen and um, looking at it from an end-to-end -end service. Thank you.